This week I painted the Venice Assassin, and I'll show you my poor attempt at painting marble. So, we offer a 3D printing service in store where customers provide the files. And if you want this design, I'll link in the description below. This was a 3D printed commission for. And of course, you had to be a troll and give me a white color scheme to paint. If it wasn't obvious, the boss troll Metal Gear Solid 3 is the color scheme I'm going for, or loosely following. The mini was printed in any cubic plant based clear resin, so it's really hard to see and clean up the support marks. Luckily, someone in the store primed it black, which makes the cleanup easier. But due to that, I don't have any footage. Using a hobby knife, I slice off the support marks along the mini. I then follow up with a file and polishing stick. I had to use a tiny file for the heart to reach areas. Now, some of the clear resin is exposed. It wouldn't give an even surface for priming, so I give it an ISO bar from the ultrasonic cleaner and use a toothbrush to remove the rest of the paint. I need to prime the bottom of the base to seal the resin from the light to stop the resin from over curing, so I use a painting clip to hold the mini upside down to paint it black. Once the black has dried, I go over the white primer for the rest of the mini. I use a light grey wash by mixing some grey with plenty of airbrush flow improver. I spray it on onto my thumbnail to check for the consistency I want. It's looking a little thick for a wash, so I add more thinner to the mix. Once it looks more translucent, apply the first coat from the bottom of the mini. This creates subtle shading for the whites. Also, remember to keep some grey wash for later. It will come in handy for blending. I paint the zipper a light grey to give it some visual variation. I over thin some light grey to shade in the recess along the legs. Hopefully this creates a natural blend. Well, it didn't blend the way I wanted it to. It is most obvious on the foot, there is a clear separation of paint, so I went over with a white to clean up the grey. The mini was still looking a little flat for my liking, so I added a little grey wash to the bus, back, butt, and armpit to add more definition. Using the same light grey wash I prepared earlier, spray it onto the model to create a subtle blend between the colours. Paint a light grey for the visor housing, a medium grey for the mask and sensors, Silver for the bullets on her arms. I mixed two different greens together to get the desired color. One was too dull and the other was too saturated. I paint all the tactical gear green. Brown for the pistol holster, pouches, and knife sheath. And a dark gray for the pistol and knife. I was recommending Gilman Flash for the skin because it shades and highlights by itself. The mini started to look like a monochromatic mess, so to add more contrast to the mini, I paint gold for the scowl, visor housing, and bullets. Red for the visor. I went with a dark grey for the sniper instead of the black, because I want to see how different the shade would look on a grey compared to a black. For a little pop, I give the scowl and the sniper a gold. Green wash for the tactical gear. A black wash for everything else that isn't white, and I deliberately give the sniper a heavy wash to give it a darker finish. Light brown dry brush for the elements painted brown, and a light grey dry brush for all the dark grey elements. As usual, there were some mistakes, so I painted white over the green overspill. Red for the scope, and a white dot on the center for a lens effect. If you're feeling unconfident, practice on your thumbnail before painting the mini. I would like the pillow to be made of marble, and I think going for a pink would make the assassin pop. I wanted to try the method from Rob Paint Models. Please check out his video, he goes into depth on the technique he uses. I will leave a link to his videos in the description for your convenience. First, we need to mask off the mini so we can airbrush the marble effect. We had some masking party in store, so I'll be using this instead of masking tape. It's a bit hard to maneuver everything into place, so sculpting tools come in handy, especially for the details such as the feet. I want the granular texture of the marble to be grey and white, so I spray on a grey, followed by a light grey and a white. 
I apply the last two colors lightly so I get the natural shift in colors. Then a gloss varnish is added to give a smooth finish. This helps it to look like marble. As shown in Rob's video, baby wipes will be used for stenciling because the fibers give a marble-like texture. I tear it up randomly to get some variation for stenciling. Then I wrap the mini with the baby wipes. The bonus of using masking putty is that it keeps the baby wipes in place. I start with a pink, followed by a light pink and a white. I apply the last two colors lightly so I get the natural shift in colors, then a gloss of varnish to get a marble finish. Once that is done, remove the baby wipes and masking putty. Yeah, that's one fine looking marble effect. Why doesn't mine look like that? Ah! I guess I'll try to paint on a marble texture. I'll start blocking in the idea with a pink and maybe a darker pink for variation. I'll mix pink and red together. Wait a minute. Partially mixed paint has a separation that somewhat looks like marble texture. Maybe I can experiment with that. I apply gloss varnish first so that the paint can flow easily into each other. I load my brush up with the paint and start to add color, switching between red, pink, and white. I had to work quickly to cover all the terrain before the paint started to dry. This reminds me of wet blending, but instead of using a wet brush, I'm using really thick paints so that the paint has a strong pigment separation. Add a red wash to bring out the shadows and details. And varnish it with a gloss for a smooth, shiny marble look. Since it's a ruin, I dry brush the edge with brown and off-white to add chipping damage and thus build up. Unfortunately for me, I got some pink on her legs. I won't be able to get the same subtle shadows with the airbrush without messing the rest of the mini up, so I layer with whites and greys until it looks somewhat thick. I use dry basing snow to add some variation to the base. It makes sense for someone wearing white camo to be in a snow environment. I sprinkle on the snow and set it to the mini with ISO. By using ISO, I can get a bigger clump of snow compared to using PVA glue. I don't know why, but some of the snow decided to stick onto the sniper. I tried to remove it with a dry brush, but with no luck. So I used masking party to remove the snow. It didn't remove all the snow, but it looks good enough. Finally, paint the rim black. I think the mini turned out fine, but far from my best. The white doesn't look smooth, the snow looks too clumpy, and the marble is painted too thick. And overall, it looks painted, which is not a desirable trait in miniature painting. On the bright side, there's always room to learn and improve, and this was the first step I had to take to motivate myself. Thank you for watching the video, and see you in the next one!